a tutorial on the ambiguous case of the law of signs. You can find this tutorial as well as a free worksheet with an answer key and other goodies at mathwarehouse.com slash ambiguous case. The goal of this tutorial is to be able to answer questions like the one on the screen here, question six, which comes from that free worksheet on our on our web page. You have a triangle DEF <clears throat> and you know that the length of D is 6, E is 24, and the measure of angle E is 38. And we want to know how many triangles can be formed. All right, well, before we even try to, to, do, to solve a problem like this, let's take a step back and just look at, let's just do two problems using the law of signs and see what we mean by ambiguity. You'll see from this first triangle and the second triangle that we're going to look at, what is meant by ha the ambiguous case. Let's just say I have a triangle, like on the screen here. It's got a side of 20, an angle of 11, uh, sorry, a side of 20, 11, and an angle of 29, and we want to figure out how big angle X is. So, we can say that the sine of 29 over 11 equals the sine of X over 20. And let's just solve for sine of x and just do a regular law of sines problem. Get our calculator out. Let's see the sine of 29 times 20 divided by 11 will give you 0.88. And if we want 0.88 and some change, right? It's 0.88. 147. To find x, hopefully you remember from your law of sines problems that you just take the sine inverse of your decimal, and if you round your answer to the nearest whole degree, you get 62 degrees. All right, very, it seems like a very straightforward law of sines problems. At this point, it is. We found that x was 62 degrees. All right, let's just table that for a second and look at a second triangle, and then we'll see what we mean by ambiguity by the ambiguous case. Let's solve this triangle. There's some similarities to the other triangle. You'll notice we have a 29 here and 11 here, just like the other triangle. And we want to find the value of this side length x here. Okay, law of signs, just set it up. Um, 11 over the sine of 29 equals x over the sine of 118. I always prefer to put my variable on the top for law of sines problems to make life a little easier. So x equals 11 times the sine of 118 over the sine of 29. And let's get our calculator out and do this. Okay, when you punch this into your calculator, you'll discover that the length of x is 20. Which might be familiar to you. If you let's let's take a step back for a second and look at the triangle we had just looked at. It had a length of 20. It had let's put these right next to each other. Well, the best thing will be to look at the picture down here. Here's the two pictures. All right. Here was on the right. This was problem one that we looked at. And here was problem two. In problem two, we found the 20. In problem one, we found the 62. What these two triangles point out is that given one angle, and two sides, one angle, two sides of a triangle, it might actually be possible to create two triangles. Now notice this angle is not in between the two sides that we know. We know 20, we know 11, we know 20, we know 11, and we know 29 degrees. So what you can, um, what this means is if we have some triangle right, 
and we know that this is 3 and this is 7 and this is, I don't know, like 30 degrees. We might have an angle here in one triangle and we might be able to swivel this guy over, this side over, and create a second triangle with another angle. Now here's an interactive demonstration um, showing exactly what I mean. We've got a triangle on the left here. We've got a, a side, one, two, two sides here, one angle. And you can swivel this second one over. We'll talk in a second about why that's mathematically possible, but this is what is meant by, by an ambiguity here. If we know 20, we know 11, and we know 29 degrees, it is ambiguous as to whether we have one triangle or another triangle. Do we have this, the triangle with the 62 degree angle or the triangle with the 118 degree angle? Um, this would not be the case if the angle were in the side. This, this whole swivel idea would not be the case, for instance, if we knew that this was 30 degrees and we knew that this side was 20 and this side was, was um, like whatever, it was, was 40. As you can see, when we, if we had the angle in the middle, we wouldn't be able to do this, this swiveling. There would really only be one way to connect the two endpoints. So the MB, and also, if that were the case, if we had the angle in the middle of two sides, we wouldn't be able to use the law of sines, right? We need an angle and a side opposite of each other. So the ambiguous case of the law of sines only arises for triangles where you have two sides and an angle not in between those sides. Now let's look mathematic at the mathematics behind why this, um, this occurs. To understand mathematically why we can have this ambiguity, let's just look at, um, at two triangles. If we have a right triangle, and I put it on the um, unit uh, on the Cartesian plane here, we've got a one and a two, hypotenuse of two, and we want to figure out how large this angle x is, right? We can say that the sine of x equals one over two, opposite of our hypotenuse, and x equals the sine inverse of one half, which you may know is 30 degrees. All right, so we've got a 30 degree angle here. However, if you remember in quadrant one and in quadrant two, the sine function is positive. So we could go to quadrant two and draw this exact same triangle. We could give it a hypotenuse of two, an angle of one, and in this case, The angle going over here is not actually 30, right? It is 180 minus 30, or 150. So x in this case is not only the quadrant one angle that your calculator will always give you. It'll always give you your calculator will always give you the acute angle in quadrant one, an angle less than 90. It, the sine of a number could also be the one in quadrant two. In our, in our two examples earlier, we got a 62 degree angle, right, in the first problem. And then if you remember, we also got a 118 degree angle. A 62 and a 118 degree angle. <clears throat> so what we're going to do when we have to deal with the ambiguous case of the law of sines is we're going to find our angle x like normal. We'll have two sides and an angle. We'll find x. And we'll know if, at this point in time, whether we could create a triangle. If you get 30 degrees, we, we can create one triangle. Then we're going to look at this 62 degree, at this um, quadrant 2 angle, this 150 degree angle, and see, could that be a possible angle of our triangle? So let's look at a specific problem to see a little more clearly what I mean. We've got triangle DEF. We want to know how many triangles can be formed in this situation. So we are going to try to look at this angle here, right? We, law of sines requires using opposite measurements, so that means we're interested in these ones. So let's find the value of x by just using law of sines. Sine of x equals the sine of 38 <coughs> over 24. 
solve this like a normal law of sines problems. And you'll find that the sine of x in this case is 0.154. And take the sine inverse of this to get um, 8.85 degrees. We can round this to 9 degrees. All right, so that is our acute angle. That is our. Remember, when you use the calculator, you get the quadrant 1 angle. We got the 9 degree angle here. Now we want to look, could we, like in the prior example with the 30 and the 150 degree angle, could we have an angle that's 180 minus 9? Let's see, 180 minus 9 is 171. Is it possible for this triangle to have a 171 degree angle? And the answer is no. Let's look at why. If x is 171 degrees up there, you cannot also have a 38 degree angle down here. So the general steps that we're going to use to solve these problems is solve it like a normal law of sines problems and get the acute angle. If this acute angle is valid, like a 9 degree angle is completely valid, we can make a triangle that has an has a 9 degrees up here and a 38 down here and you can see what the other triangle is by adding them up and subtracting that sum from 180. Okay, so we got one triangle if the acute angle works. Then find the angle in quadrant 2. Do 180 minus acute angle, 171. The sum of that angle, in this case 171, plus the sum of the angle that you were given in the problem must be less than 180 degrees. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to make a triangle. 171 plus 38 is not less than 180 degrees. Therefore in this triangle, in this triangle here, there can only be one possible triangle. <coughs> okay, let's try another triangle. Let's try problem 5 from the worksheet. You can see what we're given here. We're again in, in this situation where we have two sides and the angle that is not in between them. And we want to see can we create one or two triangles from this. Alright, so let's just find the, the one and only angle that we can in this case, which is this angle here. So we can say that the sine of 42 over 92 equals the sine of x over 120. And just solve for the sine of x. All right, just use your calculator here to find that the sine of x is approximately point. 8, 7. And when you do the sine inverse of this, you will find that x equals 61 degrees. We can definitely make a triangle that has a 61 or x is in a 42 here. So we've got one triangle. Do we have another triangle? Is there a quadrant 2 angle that we can use? So remember now to check quadrant 2 you just do 180 minus 61 to get the angle you're interested in or 119. So can we put a 119 up here? You just do that by checking is 119 plus 42 less than 180? It is. So here's an example of the ambiguous case given 92, given 120, given 42, we could really create two triangles. It is ambiguous as to whether we mean the triangle with the 61 degree angle or the 119 degree angle. Let's try one more problem, which um, is kind of a tricky one, but it might be a good one to end the tutorial with. This is um, from one of the last problems on that free worksheet. It's a challenge problem at the end question 22 from that sheet it says for triangle ABC it 
And given A is 6, B is 10, and the measure of A is 42, how many triangles can be formed? And well, it's always a good idea when you're um, given a word promise to at least draw this out so we can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. So we've got a side that's 6, a side that's 10, and 42 is opposite the 6, and a 42 degree angle here. Right? How many triangles can we form? Right, we're interested in the opposite, so we've got the 6 with the 42, and the 10 with the, we'll call this angle X. Alright, so let's put the sine of X on top. Sine of X over 10 equals the sine of 42 over 6, and the sine of x equals 10 times the sine of 42 over 6. Punch that into your calculator. Um, and you'll see that the sine of x uh, should equal 1.11. There might be a big red flag going off in your head right now. If you remember sine, and if you study the unit circle, you know that the sine or the, uh, the y value in the unit circle never gets greater than 1, right? The sine of y's greatest value is 1. And if you want further confirmation that there's a problem here, try to punch into your calculator. Try to do this. Type sine inverse of 1.11 and you'll get an error message. That's because in this case there's actually no triangles that can be created with a side of 6 opposite a 42 degree angle and, a, and then another side that has a length of 10. So this is a tricky problem that you might not even see in your class, but it is possible there are no triangles possible. And you'll know that when you get to this point where you, so you solve for sine of x, and it's an invalid um, number, like 1.11. Alright, so that wraps it up for the ambiguous case of the law of sines. Just uh, to recap the steps, you set it up like a normal law of sines problems. Solve for the um, unknown angle that you can find. At this point, you'll know if there are any triangles possible. If it's like question 22 here, you'll get an error message, and you can't create any triangles. If you can create, uh, if you can get an angle x, you're then, you then found the quadrant one angle, the acute angle, and you then want to check: can there be a quadrant two angle? Like, um, like in this case, if you find the 62 degree angle, you want to find: can there be a 118 degree angle by doing 180 minus the acute angle? and adding it to the other side angle that they were given, seeing if that sum is less than 180. All right, if you'd like more, um, more practice with the ambiguous case, visit our website and enjoy the free, uh, free practice and, and worksheet with answer key.